Hello everyone, it's Sean from Having From Repairs and today I've got with us a Crate G80 or excuse me, G80 XL guitar amplifier. Now I've had this amplifier for uh, many years. Um, not going to say how many, it's just been a lot. Uh, and it's been working great for uh, quite a long time. However, about two or three years ago uh, when I was just playing around on my guitar or plugging in something into it to amplify some audio uh, the audio would start to cut in and out uh, the longer this thing was powered up um, and so I kind of want to start digging into why that's happening maybe uh, refresh this amplifier a bit and get it in better function I've currently got a 1k Hertz tone uh, from my signal generator pumping through it and I don't know if you can hear that but the pots are obviously dirty Which might be one of the reasons why it's having the issues that it is having. Uh, although because it is an older amplifier, I suspect that there are some other components internal as well, well that have worn down, especially if there's any electrolytic electrolytics. Now this is a solid state amplifier, meaning that there's no tubes uh, in it. It's all transistor based. Um, probably some ICs and stuff as well for the preamp uh, portion of the amplifier. Uh, but we are going to I'm going to tear this apart and get it up on my bench basically take out the top portion which is the amplifier portion pull it away from the disconnect it from the actual uh, speaker that's inside the amp uh, and then we'll be using test equipment from there on out to uh, check our signals and and look over all the components uh, inside the amplifier itself I also wanted to share a bit of a surprise I came by uh, friend gave this to me uh, from church old military crate but it's got some uh, what looks to be some old 19 probably late, late 1950s 19 or er, mid to early 1960s Ford uh, Finoco Bendix AM radios I don't know if these would be worth seeing if they can get operational again or maybe full refurbishing I have my doubts but uh, nice piece of little history inside of here and then some bigger surprises were down underneath the bottom shelf now the wife's already look at all that dust good night wife's already laid claim to the actual military style crate probably gonna sand it paint it white turn it into a little coffee table but uh, and we have a Heath kit or a signal generator here looks like it gets mega cycles up to 110 or 220 mega cycles that's a megahertz modern language Kill, let's see kilocycles kilocycles yeah depending on what is selected a b c d or e there goes your channel selection right here let's see rf output rf steps Probably a nice little bulb in there that highlights this green gem based 
uh, gym or plastic let's see external oh you got internal modulation external cool nice little ugh, dead spiders creepy old aura sig gen might be able to take that apart maybe we can do something with it get it functional again I mean if I can get that operational that'd be a nice little collection there to my workbench uh, this little crate is a crusty analog multimeter turn off the light so I'm not overexposing things yeah not sure if that's worth uh, either getting operational or completely refurbishing oh, it's got a nice little schematic diagram in here Should come very helpful if decide to take it apart uh, old test leads all right and then what I found really nice in here man it is dirty it's got a, a lot of work that needs to get accomplished this guy it's got a Old Zenith uh, tube radio. Need a lot of work too. What's the model number on this? FD eighty one zero Y or O Y? I want to look that up for a second. What does the uh, internet have to say about this five D? 810 the peacemaker it's in the radio corporations it's like it was built in the late 40s the roaring 40s oh, let's see. yeah tell from this one to the one I have obviously seen better better days But I can uh, looks like I can get some service schematics for it. Let's see, super heterodyne. It's got 455 kilohertz intermediate frequency. Uh, let's see, tuned circuits, six AM circuits. So if I can restore it and align it and get it functional. Uh, question do I, do I attempt to do this at all got a lot of experience working on transistor based AM radios uh, never really worked on a tube based one wonder how many tubes are in this thing it's probably written somewhere on here and I just haven't caught it yet I guess five probably wrong Oh, hey, it was right there. Five tubes. I think that was pretty common for the era. Yeah, so I've worked on several AM transistor based radios. Uh, pretty com pretty familiar with that, but um, you know, these, uh, these tube based radios, eh, kind of a different thing, higher voltages. Uh, more things to have to be concerned with. She is pretty though. Wonder if this outer case is Bakelite or however you pronounce it. I'm upset that this dial plate is cracked, but uh, it'll probably still clean up all right. You know. Hmm. Y'all tell me in the old doobly-doo. Probably be some anthology of sort if I...
go through these uh, different things and be done over multiple videos instead of just one but um, and which is the same thing I'm planning with this amp that we're looking at uh, just so I have entire history of uh, repair done to it and then for those of you who enjoy those kinds of things so I expect it to be multiple parts you have the actual tube type sitting here as well which is good could also be bad depending on if I can get my hands on them or not I'm sure there's some new old stock somewhere any of y'all who uh, have done this before let me can you give a brother a hint please now I'll just be uh, old Google searching trying to find things yeah like I said I've worked on tube radios before. I've worked on amplifiers that use plate and screen or screen voltages. So I'm used to high high voltage uh, AM amplifiers, transistor based stuff though. So uh, you know some things are similar, some are not. Mostly concerned about the higher voltage. So the higher amperage you get up to about a hundred or more little amps and start to convulse a bit heart palpitations going through you yeah it's kind of got me double thinking some things here it'll be okay Sean you'll be just fine and that doesn't mean I don't have other things I still need to repair too even if I do some anthology videos style videos on other more different kinds of things still got a couple galaxy s9 pluses that need screen replacement as well as some other things around the home that uh, could get repaired as well I think my uh, I, think I got family members sending me a camera here soon for me to fix that'd be rather nice but uh, anyways Y'all let me know down in the comments, what would you, uh, would you like to see that stuff? Uh, if you would, uh, put it in the comments and, you know, I'll probably just be doing it anyway, so, probably enough waffling to get this, uh, amp apart, get it up on my desk. Alright, so I've done a wee bit of just going over the board, looking at some components and stuff. Um, obvious bulge on this electrolytic here that is a 35 volt uh, 47 microfarad cap I think I annotated that but uh, I think I also mentioned you know more than likely we're gonna have to replace all the electrolytics here uh, is that one 47 microfarad? What was that guy? 100 microfarad. There we go. 35 volt, 100 microfarad. Got at least two of those in here. Both of those should be it. That one obviously bulging. Several 35 volt, 47 microfarad caps. Um, let's see one. I think a another one was over here several by several I mean two however we do have several 50 volt 2.2 microfarad caps however we do have several 50 volt 2.2 microfarad ca uh, capacitors so at least eight of them a few of them sitting underneath this uh, metal plate here covering the R input section. Uh, one input is set of zero dB reference, the other one, um, yeah, if you input the same audio level, uh, once it goes through, it's gonna be at least six dB down. So, half the voltage. What our AC waveform we stick in. Uh, what else do we have? Well, we got some uh, 50 volt, 220 microfarad capacitors. 
Uh, is that these ones here? Yep. 220 microfarad right there. We'll end up replacing these two. I think I've got the majority of these uh, capacitors now that I've stocked back up. But uh, we'll have to remove this entire board from the chassis. Which means that this is going to have to come off. All these pegs and then if there are any nuts behind them for these potentiometers, those will have to come off as well. Let's see. Uh, tip 147, tip 142. Uh, 147, uh, both of these are Power Darling 10 transistors. The 147 is a PNP. Uh, the 142 would be an MPN. Let's see, we also have a 2N3403 MPN. This encased and potted this little metal casing here. I assume it generates quite a bit of heat. And if you look south, you have a 2N3440 uh, NPN transistor, also in a metal tube. Again, I presume to dissipate heat. Uh, at least, let's see, six or seven uh, RC forty five fifty eight P op amps in here. Uh, several J one seven six P channel FETs and J. Uh, where's one at? Probably one right there. Uh, here goes one right here. Hopefully that's a J112 in channel FET. And what else? Oh, I missed this guy. Now, one of these 35 volt 22 microfarad capacitors. We got some big caps as well. Obviously, a true power supply here a uh, big old transformer uh, followed by your diodes for your full wave bridge rectifier like the fact that we have some safety caps sitting over here I didn't look them up but I'm going to assume probably uh, X1 Y2 safety caps um, I'll need to be able to get some safety caps for that uh, Zenith AM radio too um, I'll get into that if I start that video series but um, it's nice to see those here but uh, not really a whole lot more going on, on this board several resistors and inductors and stuff some more diodes got like a halfway bridge right to fire sitting right there uh, just a guess don't quote me on that. Man, look at these big, big resistors. These are 10 watt resistors. 250 ohm, uh, plus or minus 5% 10 watt resistors. These are huge resistors. They have to dissipate quite a bit of heat. Man, massive, massive, massive resistors. Uh, obviously some rust on it as well I mean if we get this all taken apart I can uh, send it down quite a bit get rid of the rust paint over it that's something that we'll have to do more than likely but uh, let's look at uh, I did dig up a little bit of service literature it's more of a owner's manual did find Some schematics for a crate GX80 instead of a G80 amplifier. I'm not sure if 
everything's going to be the same, more than likely not. But, uh, you know, it could be worthwhile comparing the two. If, uh, if it comes to having to troubleshoot to that point. But uh, in the owner's manual, there is some things for us that uh, take note of. The output power rating 80 watt. RMS into an 8 ohm minimum load so that uh, speaker is an 8 ohm speaker uh, we are the G80XL custom designed 12 inch speaker the maximum input signal 4 volts peak to peak for our 0 dB input 8 volts peak to peak at the next 6 dB input which makes sense like I said, 60 be down. Gonna, gonna be half the voltage, so 4 volt input, 60 be down would be 2 volts. You double it up to 8 volts, and then you get 4 volts through the circuitry. Let's see. What are some things that we can test? Sub control, 9 dB of boost at 80 hertz. This is good information. Uh, total system gain and signal noise ratio. See, channel A, we should have at least 110 dB of gain at 1K Hertz at all controls with the sub focus and lead at zero. Um, and, and then all the controls adjusted to 10. Channel B, so this is channel A, this is what it's talking about. All controls at zero. Input, I think what it's saying is these have to remain at zero but as we increase our gain and level or probably gain and level or maybe just slightly increase gain and max out level I don't, I don't know something we'll te we can test um, looking at 110 dB of gain is what we should have now I imagine that uh, there would be some feedback into these op amps to limit the audio so it's going to be uh, you're gonna have some cutting or some audio cut off to keep from overdriving the speaker and breaking it uh, here goes channel B you know selectable between air volume you got your low mid and high and then this right here kind of slightly adjust something to make the audio sound a little more crisp the best way I could put it but um, what was the owner's manual say for channel B uh, 66 DB at 1k Hertz at all controls when they're moved up to 10 because uh, we start at 0 and we go to 10 so I imagine it means 0 here and then all the way up to this way will be 66 DB gain that's with your sub focus and lead sitting at zero. Oh wait a second. All controls at ten. It doesn't mean it doesn't mention anything about low, mid, and high, unless I'm just overlooking it here. But it does say bright off. So that uh, one little switch, toggle switch has to be depressed. I mean, that's some fairly decent of its time signal to noise ratio basically what it's saying is uh, signal to noise is obviously anytime you have any any form of analog uh, amplifying you're not just of an analog signal sorry you amplify an analog signal you're not just amplifying the signal itself but background noise as well uh, the the concept of signal to noise is to ensure that the signal uh, what you're reproducing at the speaker has a uh, greater signal strength than the background noise that's also being, ampl also being amplified. Now that background noise is going to try to be get filtered out and that's what it's saying here. Channel A, uh, your signal is going to be at least 45 dB greater than the noise and channel B, 67 dB greater than the noise. So that's a good thing. Uh, sub control 9 dB boost at 80 Hertz focus uh, focus control proprietary circuit 
Not much more to know about that. Hmm. Lead 15 dB boost at 1k Hertz, so we should see that if we go from 0 up to 10. Pumping 1k Hertz through the thing, we should see about 15 dB of boost. Low, mid, high, 10 dB, 16, 17, uh, 17 dB. So of course 10 for the low is at 80, 16, 1k Hertz for mid, 17, 5k Hertz for the high. So cool, those are things that uh, we can go ahead and test those just to see what happens. What we've done is set my arbitrary waveform generator, signal generator, whatever you want to call this guy. Uh, 80 hertz, 0.775 volts peak to peak. I've got that sine wave output through channel one. Feeding through a cable, wrapping around a bunch of stuff. Anyways, there it goes down there. Going to the half inch plug, quarter inch plug of um, radio, excuse me, guitar cord, audio jack, uh, into my zero uh, dB input, because that's what I want to test under. Um, let me turn on my oscope. Well, it's already on. Uh, need to wake it up. Wake up. All right. Now put our Volts RMS and frequency down here. So right now, that is on. Let me put all these at zero. And we'll turn this on. All right. And I'm gonna give this just a smidge gain. And increase the level smidge as well. Hmm. Oh, I'm on channel B. What a knucklehead thing to do. Smidge gain. There, there we go. We start to see a sine wave happening there. A very ugly sine wave said we've got some capacitors to replace I imagine that that might clear up some of this but anyways um, let's do a Reference voltage on here. See if we can make it. We'll increase this up to one volt. Let's see. Amplitude. Uh, one volt peak to peak. Okay. And then we're going to set my level control for unity gain or as close as possible. One zero four volts. I think that's pretty close. Man, that is an ugly waveform. All right. So now, if I increase uh, low, right, I should see ten dB of gain. Uh, let's see. We're starting out at. 1.04 volts. Okay. And I'm going to increase this. See if we get any audio clipping too. Ooh. Turn down my volts per division scale. Obviously, as we increase our gain, that audio uh, AC waveform is. Looking a lot better. Probably should have done this on a 10 by scale on the 
Probe. Let me switch it over to Timby. Yeah, change my probe from one by to ten by. Set our reference back to one volt deep. Got it closer that time. All right. Ooh. Actually. There goes our one. Now I'm going to switch it over to 10 times. And we'll increase this. So I went to 100 millivolts. Yeah, like I said, it would clip after a while. But, uh,. Should be about 40 volts RMS. We were to multiply that by 10. Right? Yeah, one to 40 volts, that's 32 dB of gain. wonder if I'm testing this the right way because that's a lot more than little well, manual states. Probably should be testing right after the uh, potentiometer itself. Let me see if there's find a spot on there somewhere. Be right back. All right, so what I did differently is I'm still got that one volt AC signal coming in. But I went to my level adjustment pot and I took my oscope probe and put it on this first leg and adjusted it for one volt and then put my low all the way down to zero and hooked my oscope probe up to that first leg down there and uh, we'll redo that measurement. All right, so I'm using volts RMS, but uh, it should still be the, we'll switch it over to peak to peak. See measure, voltage. So clear them out. Measure, voltage, type, switch it over to peak to peak. Add, turn, and uh, let's see, add that back in. Okay. So at zero on the dial, uh, we're at about 50 millivolts peak to peak. Okay, let's start increasing that. And we max out on the pot at 1.2526 volts. Let's go plug this over here. 1.26. Eh, 28 dB of gain. Okay. I think that's where how we should be making this measurement. Not from the back 8 ohm speaker, but uh, through the front. And I'm wondering if I needed to have uh, the output 
put onto a eight ohm dummy load for these measurement measurements, but we're at least getting 10 dB of gain at 80 on our low. What else do we have? A frequency one K Hertz. Still on one volt. I'll change that. So supposed to be on our mid. Not getting anything there. Make sure I got it on the right spot. Yeah, I've done my poking and prodding. It's hard to get to those three prongs underneath here, but I'm really I'm not getting much through this. So I'm wondering if I need to get the board out to test that one better. But oh well. Moving on, we can go to uh, 5K Hertz. Let's see, 5K Hertz. And Get on there. All right, got that back on the level adjust. One volt. Let's get the level set to one volt. Practically there, and we'll. See what we can get on the high. Been playing with this for a few minutes, and something I learned uh, I wasn't getting anything on high either at 5k hertz, just flatlining, even with this level set to one volt. So poops and giggles I just turned it all the way to the right you can see we start to get a little AC waveform there our 5k Hertz signal but uh, no matter what I do with the high it doesn't increase it or decrease it at all but watch this when I mess with the mid huh there's feel like there's something wrong in here why is my mid adjustment affecting my high frequency range then when I switch this to 1k Hertz uh, let's do that man that's so ugly I can see that mid adjustment for 1k or signal on my high too. I'm currently on this test point for my high. High doesn't affect it, mid does. So either I'm on the wrong test point, the wrong portion, or the wrong pin of this potentiometer, and it's hard to get uh, a probe onto there, but there's something else going on. But uh, either way, I think I've seen enough. I already know that this board needs to get recapped. Need some cleaning done, so it's more likely going to be the next bit that we go through. Well, ladies and gents, 
hope you've um, enjoyed what I'm doing so far with this guitar amplifier and you want to see more of it then please stay tuned to uh, this channel as we will be replacing capacitors doing a bit of troubleshooting on the board um, and trying to get it restored to how it originally sounded when I first had it many 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 years ago uh, if you like this content and you want to subscribe please hit that button and give a big old thumbs up uh, not ever required but always appreciated take care bye